Hi guys, it's the old man back again. Uh, not quite sure the sequence of events coming up, but anyway, I'm just sort of keeping in touch. Keep you all bored out of your skulls. <laughs> uh, this is a sort of intro, but you know what? Anybody who's watched uh, Cerberus, guy called Harold, lovely fella, he often starts off with a general sort of intro which is not necessarily to do with machining but he tells the odd story and such like which is sometimes quite interesting. Um, it's always possible of course in my case with any intro I'm doing you can just fast forward and get to the meat of the matter. Anyway two things came to mind. Uh, one was actually um, following an event that occurred not long ago where there was a a very nasty shooting accident which was called an accident in fact it was negligence uh, gun accidents don't often occur as such it's usually negligence and I'm just taking the opportunity to remind anybody who has firearms that there are four very good rules to remember they were the ones that came up from uh, the late Jeff Cooper and the first one, which, well, he didn't actually put it like this, but I do. The first one is, a gun is always loaded. All right, you've opened it, you've checked it, closed it. All right, as far as anybody's concerned, it's still loaded. Second one, never point your gun at anything you do not wish to destroy. The third one is, keep your finger off the trigger until you actually want to shoot. And the fourth one is know your target and what is beyond. And th those four rules really, with those you can't go far wrong. But I would emphasize and always do, I used to do, uh, I'm an NRA certified instructor, at least I used to be. Um, I always stress number two, don't point your gun at anything you do not wish to destroy. Because if the other three were forgotten or not followed, that second one is basically, as far as I can see, um, a catch-all, right? A lot of you guys probably don't have guns, you may even hate the damn things, but I've been shooting competitively on and off all my life. Uh, gun safety cannot be overstressed. All right, but anyway, thinking about guns took me back a long, long way. When I was an army cadet, I used to shoot no, um, Mark IV Lee Enfield rifles at Bisley, which is the mecca, if you like, of shooting in the UK. And there is still competitive rifle shooting done there now. But when I was, uh, say, a cadet, we used to go there for a practice session in April, I think it was. We went there for five days, maybe maybe even nearly a week and we were billeted in old sheds <laughs> they were really just old sheds I don't know what they called them some other polite name shacks no that's not very polite is it anyway one of these shacks would sleep uh, at least two maybe three I forget now very basic basic spring metal frame bed with a spring and a horsehair mattress. Hardly luxury but it worked. Anyway the purpose of this is to mention that when we were out on the range and shooting on and off possibly all day uh, the ammunition in the 303 British cartridge was cordite and cordite, oh excuse me, oh let's change hips, ouch. <laughs> um, Cordite is a stick. It's like little, little uh, what diameter were they? I can't remember, about a 32nd and the same height as the inside of the cartridge. So it was packed with all these sticks of cordite. And cordite, when it burns, has a very characteristic smell. It's not unduly unpleasant, but it's quite strong. And uh, it's a very familiar smell from the old days out on the range, and inevitably you breathe some in because it's wafting around all over the place. And here's the nub of the story. 
and forgive me if it's a bit strong for some people but after two days or so that was two days was enough uh, people were actually dropping uh, cordite farts <laughs> It wasn't a case of the food we were eating necessarily, but um, yeah, after about two days, some people, probably myself included, a little bit of flatulence and it was like, oh my god, it smells like cordite. <laughs> How it got into the system to emerge in that form, I have no idea. Anyway, that's my little stupid story. Um, <laughs> on to matters more mechanical. Uh, I'll put in a picture after this intro just to remind you of a block that I was thinking of making. I just described it in the last video uh, to fix to the top of a tool holder and direct coolant very directly to the tool. And I've actually, well, I mean, it, <coughs> I've got so many offcuts and scraps. I mean, here are two chunks, you could do a bit of machining on those, but you know what, I'm lazy. And the old system, which uh, others may have seen from my gravity feed, uh, usually involves a pillar on the carriage, and then I've taken the retaining thing off, and then a bracket with uh, an old valve assembly, Oil comes in, comes out, controlled drip by the valve. Anyway, being less than keen on going quite to those extremes, I'm going to try and just riddle around and find what I've got in the way of fittings um, and make something much simpler, which can be quickly attached or detached from a tool holder and it could be put on the one that's in use, which might well be the um, parting tool, one that really needs some lube. So I'm going to show you all my bits and I'm going to see what I can come up with. And the other thing, well I'll do a bit of handheld because it's, it's an easy cheat. The other thing is I'm making plans for uh, powering the Z-axis on the Grizzly. So I'll, I'll cover that. Again, it's a case of planning, and as you know with me, plans change. <laughs> I change my mind all the time. Anyway, that's it. I'll show you the picture of the block that I had thought I might make, but uh, as I say, it's much more work than what I'm probably going to come up with. All right? <laughs> so that's it. that's it for this long-winded intro, and uh, sorry about the uh, slightly rude story but it still amuses me even now all those years later. I'm going back by the way in that story to about 1962, 61, 62. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs>
<laughs> it's one of my little reminder notes. Okay, on top of the column here, I've taken the bolts out of that. And again, excuse jerky handheld. Um, what we've got here, we've got two locking rings. Two locking rings and this cover, which I guess I'm taking it off. It bears down on a bearing assembly. Uh, I've got a motor on order. It's coming from China, of course. <laughs> Extremely inexpensive. Um, I think it's it's geared 10 RPM, which may be a bit slow, but that plus a high current speed controller, I think will do what I want. Uh, anyway, one of the ideas is if you notice, this has got four slots to take a C wrench or similar, and I thought I might just try and make a drive with four prongs to engage on that and use some of these bolts to give me a standoff uh, for a motor. Again, much may change over time, but that's my initial thinking, so I can avoid the effort of having to use this handle all the time. So we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> all right, we're back to the uh, tripod, and we're also back onto the oil delivery idea, something to go on here, and as I said I can't be bothered really to machine up a block, although it would be a lot prettier, but I'm looking for an easy solution, so I've got this cheapy little import ball valve, unfortunately it's male, male thread which is a bit tedious, but anyway, the uh, inlet, I've got little bit of quarter inch fully annealed copper pipe and uh, in the UK we call these compression fittings I can't for the life of me think what you guys call them and that's what we call the olive but this I think when that's done up finally um, Let's just orientate here. You might see I've got a boatloads of, of old bits and fittings. I've got two drawers full of stuff. But of course most of this is English pipe thread, which is actually very close. But uh, this is what I'm going to try. So I'm going to try and mount this on here. And this is what we've got to work out. I've shortened I've shortened down this um, piece of flexible and it's not very good stuff, it's uh, whew, God I got four lengths for not very much I've shortened it down, I got this back on the fitting by heating it um, so it may well be this double female here that we can solder or braise something on as a bracket and that's basically all I'm after way simpler as long as this doesn't come high enough to get in the way of the uh, tool post rotation locking lever so that's the thinking at the moment quite where we go from there I'm not sure because as you know if you watch my stuff things tend to happen on the fly <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. So that's about it for the moment. And unless I come up with some other harebrained scheme. Right, well I dig in the metal area. Found this little piece. Don't know what it came off. <laughs> you know how so many of us keep bits, whether it's bits of sheet metal or brackets or whatever and I'm a lazy lazy old devil I don't want to make something if I've got something I can use so I think if that goes on there might have to make a tiny notch for the dovetail I don't think it matters so we'll take let's just get a marker we'll cut it off 
I mean, be, be prepared now, this may change my mind totally. Oops, I can't even draw straight. So we'll take, cut off there, trim off, trim off this bit, and have our 8mm by 1.25 access hole here. We'll have a cap screw and shakeproof washer so it can be locked up pretty firm, but quick to take on and off, that's the thing. And then this bracket here, what I thought, I might have to extend this by another nibble or two. Well, so I'll strip the paint off this, get it well flap disked, and see if we can attach this female, double female, onto the bracket somehow or other. Or I may shorten the bracket so we can come forward. That might be a better idea. Bring it forward a bit. So we'll cut the bracket off maybe about here. Slot doesn't matter very much. Anyway, that's the current thinking. Be prepared, I might change my mind. All right, that's chopped hell out of this piece. <laughs> Expect they'll get used to something else. This is quite handy material actually because it's fairly fairly stiff. I haven't checked to see what it is. It is actually eighth, which is sort of ten gauge, isn't it? So we must make a hole in here for the bolt. And then I think not sure how visible this is, because I haven't zoomed in too much. I'm always doing that and then getting out of focus. So we'll probably have that uh, double female, I'll get that in position, hang on a minute, all fumble fingers here. So we'll probably sweat that onto here, more or less like that I think, and uh, try that, and I'll get the flap disc on this, get all this damn paint off. And see if I can do some soldering on it. Right, well let's flap this little fella. Got back to more or less bright metal, at least there's no paint left. Um, I thought I had an 8mm uh, transfer screw, but I haven't. It doesn't get bigger than 6, so I just marked this up fairly roughly. It's not super critical for that bolt. So the next thing is set up and uh, do some soldering on that. Not sure how well this will work out. We've got quite a lot of steel here. And I'm trying to uh, use a couple of paper clips. I cannot find my soft wire. So I'm going to try this, get some heat. And I'll try some thin solder first and then try and top up with some uh, heavier stuff if I need it. should actually have uh, tinned the steel first. I usually do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now we've got trouble. Oh, I've got plenty of solder.
Yeah. Fiddle, fiddle. It's about square. I don't know whether I've lost my position. Oh dear. Got a good fillet this side. It's just the bottom there, the flux has burned a bit. Well, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> that wasn't very pretty, was it? Yeah, I should have uh, got the steel tinned up first. I was being lazy there. Yeah, I think we've got to take... It should be adequate. There's not going to be a lot of stress on it. That was messy, wasn't it? Yeah, if I tinned both items first, it would have been a lot simpler. That was me being lazy. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day for that for now. Let that cool off, clean it up, and then we'll continue in a few seconds. <laughs> well, a couple of seconds later is actually 12 hours later. <laughs> And it's still moderately cool in here. My gosh, it's brilliant. Unfortunately, there's more heat coming back, which is a bit of a whatnot. <laughs> uh, anyway, here we are. Um, I cleaned off all that flux, which was an absolute terrible mess. And you can see I've got a decent fillet of solder there. You might or might not see the one in there. It was a bit of a messy job whilst it was being done, but the flow was all right. There's a bit too much flux. Um, anyway, that's that's going to be adequate, I think. So there it is fitted on there. It's crude. I'm not looking for pretty. Um, I'll probably just radius that corner off. Now I'm going to put the... Uh, assemble this lot together and see how that's going to work. I will probably, I think if I can, put a little piece of tube in the end of this for uh, so I can get a better delivery. I don't like these ends, the hole's a bit huge for my purposes. Alright, we've got that in there. I just want a bit of pipe seal on this joint here. <laughs> this is what happens when you keep stuff for about 20 or 30 years. The bottom of the uh, tube has let go. So, uh, what's inside still seems to be viable. And I think we'll probably. Whoops, I, I may, may well be going out of frame, sorry. Uh, I'm probably going to keep this fairly long. I'm not going to cut it down yet. We'll see how it goes for the uh, direction. Basically, it's going to go off to the right with a slight angle. Let's see if we can just get this snugged up. We'll do a final tighten on it later, I think. And that basically is pretty ugly isn't it <laughs> it's, uh, but um, we'll take the six mil silicon tube from my gravity feed it's going to be a bit of a long run but I think it'll work 
and then uh, flow control from the valve here. This is always a problem. These these um, cheap fittings here, very poor thread. So I got a whole bunch of PTFE tape on there. Um, so yes, there it is. Not very pretty. So I'll put it in position and see if we can check it out. All right, as I said, it isn't pretty. It's only function that I'm after. Um, we've got a long run of, I don't know whether you can see where the pipe goes, the tubing, I should say. You see there, the other side, that's going up to the tank. Now this area, this could be a problem. I think we probably need some little um, stand up here just to keep it in a better position. It's not actually in the way. Not actually in the way. But uh, probably some little pillar maybe wire with a loop in it just to uh, keep that in a good position. It's a long run. I've got oil coming through. Let's zoom in a bit. Now if we bring this round to about 40 degrees I can leave that set up for a, a drip. And in fact I think I'll probably still put a piece of small bore tube in there because I don't need large flow or drips and uh, that can be tweaked down for the uh, to get onto the tool a bit closer. I might even take put tube in there and take one of these links out. Still like all my stuff experimental suck it and see but overall it works and it's this isn't going to be on here all the time. Um, if I had a long traverse cut or as I said earlier a parting tool then I'll put it on. And if I don't if I don't need it, I'll just take the damn thing off. Let's come back. Oops, zoom back a bit. Yeah, if it's not needed, I'll just take it off. And I'll find somewhere to park it. So it's not in my way. It's now off camera. So I'll find some little spot to put it. And otherwise it's business as usual there. Alright guys, I think that's all. Um, another old man's lash up. But uh, it'll only take about 10 seconds to fit it when I need it. And the problem I had with the one at the rear. Let's come back a bit more. The one I had at the rear, which was using using a pillar in the, in here, and then coming across, it worked all right, but it wasn't always putting the oil where I wanted it as accurately. So I think this will I think this will work. A few refinements to make, but uh, it's a case of you know usual thing. What have I got? See what we can do. All right. Anyway, might have been a bit convoluted this one for such a small project, um, but it saved me a lot of milling and messing around making a, a steel block for it. Okay. I uh, don't know what's next, other than hot weather. But <laughs> I've got other stuff in mind. I've got plenty of things to try and do. Thanks for watching.